curling bus sails, baby. Welcome to your new tow rig. Alright, so this is the first one. This is one I thought we were gonna buy. So we'll go inside so we can hear. So this is a freight liner. With the uh, under storage here. That's a rare option on the older buses. Alright, so we need a school bus to haul our toys with. So, the problem is that a one ton truck and trailer rentals, like what, five grand we figured? Yeah, we got about 3,500 in truck rental alone, but then we got to rent a gooseneck, trailer, about 30 foot, so that'll be over a grand easy. Then we gotta get a gooseneck uh, in the bed, and then we gotta enclose the bed because you know we have nowhere to store our tools and yeah, parts. Yeah, store your tools so, for two weeks of a trip. For two weeks, so like, we need something that has enclosed. An enclosed trailer, way too much money, can't find a place to rent it. Gas mileage. Yeah. Gas mileage, so... So you we're know, looking at schoolies. School bus. So... The, what's going to happen is we're going to put the submarine in the back and then we can have room for tools and stuff like that up here. So in Indiana, we have to convert this to an RV to be able to legally drive it. You cannot drive a bus without a CDL in Indiana because it's a commercial vehicle. So under 60 foot, so our trailer is 24 feet long, which means the bus, you know, do the math. So we can have up to a 71 or 72 passenger bus. The ones that we're looking at, yeah, 66 passenger. Basically we're on a length restriction. We can't exceed 60 foot and we yeah. gave ourselves 24 feet on the trailer length mm -hmm. and that's not including the, uh, that the trailer a, neck. That's yeah, including yeah, trailer neck now? Because it's an 18 foot trailer plus, I think the next two or three. Feet. Okay, plus two foot of... Yeah. Of, uh, and then imagine the hitch sticks out. Yeah. Maybe a so then it's so the trailer length because we don't want to go buy another trailer. Nick's already got a trailer, so we're, so we're strict in the bus size, and so basically we're looking at 66 just because you don't need the longest possible. But you know once all these seats are out, we'll have a lot of space. So we'll build some uh, racks for uh, beds and stuff, and we'll build you know we've got under seat storage here, so we can store tools and parts there. We'll build racks to hold the parts, and you know it's just plenty of room for just the two of us and. Hopefully Jeez. two Jeeps. Yeah. <laughs> so here's the master plan, all right? The interior of this bus, we were looking at 66 passenger ones. It's about 26 feet from behind the seat to there. Legally, to convert an, a bus to an RV, you can't have it say school bus on the side. You have to have like less than 14 passenger capacity. So if you imagine, you know, two, four people to row, four, eight, 12. So you can basically have this much seats. So what we'll do is we'll rip out that amount of seats and then just scrap them because they're not working worth anything. Then we'll keep this many seats at the shop so we can always have the maximum seating fans if needed. So the grand plan is put submarine in the back, tools and whatever, but to pay for our gas money on the trip, we're gonna find the rust free like CJ two way out somewhere in the west bring it back to Indiana, we'll be able to sell it for more money because it's rust free and we'll have our gas money, ideally. And we can have two Jeeps in here plus four feet of storage, plus the storage underneath, plus storage inside the Jeeps. And we'll just build our beds so that way they fold down, but they'll be over the height. So that's one restriction on the bus. We needed the five speed trannies because the four speed's horrible gas mileage, horrible for hills. You want a good six-cylinder diesel engine, not the four cylinders. Um, under storage, especially if you've got multiple Jeeps in here. And the height, the submarine Jeep is 73 inches, just straight across with the roll cage. The tallest bus you can get is 78 inches in the center. But you notice that these older buses, now you can get different heights, so I wanted the 78 inch, but these buses curve down. So it's probably only like 72 inches right here. So you'd have to keep the submarine dead nuts in the center of the thing and probably ratchet strap the frame so it can't bounce up and unload the suspension. So that's one thing that kind of sucks about the old bus. So this is one we thought we were going to buy. They had listed at five grand. I didn't know they were negotiable at the time. 
When we fired the thing up, smoked like a banshee. Popped the oil field cap off. It's just blowing smoke out there. So after the guy told me they're negotiable on prices, we ended up finding a blesser asking seven grand, but they were gonna take five grand, and that's all we want to spend is five grand. So this one they're asking five. They were gonna take twenty five hundred, so we're going to seven, paying five. And we're paying all cash. Cash, so we don't have a three percent credit card fee. And they give you a little bit better deal if you're paying with cash, I'm sure. Yeah, and they know we're serious, you know. And they give you the title right away too. Yeah, title today. But I mean, you can look around and this thing is clean. Oh, right. so one you thing you want to notice, because Grant hasn't been looking at, I've been looking at, I probably like the four private seller buses. Meth heads even sitting under the trees, they got moss going on the side, they're stuck in the mud. So you haven't been in the new bus yet. But this is what you remember as a school bus, right? So you've got small windows in these things, they don't go all the way up to here. Alright, so another thing you notice about the old school style buses, this is all solid. You have huge, you know, pieces of metal. This isn't all windows. And these windows are totally see-through. So this bus style, the body style, you know, basically a box on a frame. They did it from 62 to 2004. Old school, it worked good, but this is just kind of crude. This is like a school bus you would think of. Yeah, this is, you know, this is what we took to, you know, high school, get in. Yeah. But the thing's clean. These seats don't have stains. One thing I want to say, we've got wheel well humps right here which kind of sucks, but these are basically about 10 foot to the end of it. The submarine's 11 foot total, so we might just barely drive up on the humps, but that's not a problem, because my uh, roll cage is angled. On the new one too? Yeah, but the new one I don't think is tall. Okay, but, but we've the got the, cage the, the 2A's like got to go over it. Yeah, 2A won't have a cage. Oh, true. You can almost double stack 2A's. Yeah. So We'll go look at the new bus, the one that we are buying. But I mean, this place is very professional, you know, they've got super tons, nice people. super nice, tons, tons of, uh, you know, product to look at, and these oh, things hey, are clean. Out, they have all the service records for every bus, you can spend hours going through this, so that's sweet. Look at this, I mean, you can search Facebook all day to try to find a bus for sale, and you might find one for two grand. But, but to find one that meets all of our needs, under storage, tall roof, spike, high speed train, six cylinder diesel. You know, rust free. Good tires and wheels, by the way. You are not finding many buses with good tires. See, these are kind of dry rotting around here. Tires, what are you gonna spend? Grand, 1500? Oh my gosh. You know, and we're not, you know, this has got a little bit of rust, but like, you know, we're not cleaning garbage out of the thing. Yeah. You know, we're not giving it a mopping before we, you know, get in it and sleep oh, in it. One more criteria air brakes. You can get air brakes or hydraulic brakes. Hydraulic's okay, but we're towing a trailer. Air brakes are superior. So the more research I did, the pickier I got. So that's why like only two buses and a lot fit the needs. Yeah. But I mean, this this place is professional. They're they're gonna make this a lot easier for us. You know, we're still building the LJ. We've got we've got sub troubles, but we're trying to yeah. fix. The old engines out of summary. Now this is the only part of Russ that concerned me. Is up there, you can see the seams. Uh oh. Alright, so we'll get over here out the side. I mean, if we were cutting, yeah. So, this is how we're gonna get the Jeep in the bus. We're gonna cut along this seam where the panels meet. And really, this thing's not even taller than some trailers are. So, I'm not worried about height of a ramp. Yeah. We're gonna cut it here, and then we're gonna have the door hinge. On whichever side that the wiring goes, so the taillights will have a hinge that way. Yep. So. All right, we'll go look at the bus we're actually gonna get. We back drain right there. So I already came and looked at these buses Friday on my way home from spring break. Alrighty. Grant, I wanna see your reaction because you haven't seen it yet. All right, so quick recap here of why I picked what I wanted. The international buses are all four speeds. They have the right engines, some of them have the right height. The easiest way to tell when you're shopping for a bus height-wise is uh, I'm not seeing a tall one over here, but a Thomas bodied bus, see it gets high and then it drops down low, whereas the taller buses go upwards. So these are basically exactly what we we're looking at, you know, over there. But that's it right there. One eight three one seven. Five grand. We are stealing this thing. All right, exterior, so newer buses. So this one only has storage on the other side. This is the battery tray area. 
It's got three batteries. So what I'm thinking is we can just touch up the wheels on this thing and the bumper. It's got an engine block heater. Uh, it's dangling out here, but so come to this side. So we've got the uh, now this is what's nice about the newer bodies. You can see over there how the box meets the cowl kind of weird, where this is totally streamlined. Um, the bus has even got a little bit of an angle to it for gas mileage. So, I mean, we can touch up this paint right here. That's no biggie. But under storage, you can open them, I think. You gotta pull it up and then twist it. So, tinted windows. Look how much bigger these windows are, too. It is. Fast and furious wing for all the gas mileage. So it's pretty clean. You're never gonna find a perfect bus because they're sold because they're at the end of their useful life, per se. But this one had no smoke out the back, pulled the oil cap off, no blow by. I mean, solid running engine. I mean, it's got some rust. Got the frame is perfect. It's not just surface rust, but like. I mean, this isn't bad at all. I mean, thing's gonna last at least another 10 years. Oh, easily. You know, it even starts to look some hillbilly have it parked out under a shade tree before then. We don't have too much work to it, you know, we take no. off the school bus, we take off the letters. I'm sure we gotta take off the stop sign, it's not all. And the crossing thing that comes out the block sidewalk. Yeah, and the fact that this has good tires, and these are kind of an all-terrain tire. I mean, we could spend... The difference between an old bus and this bus is just the tires alone. So open her up there, buddy. This is a, that's the name of the bus. It's basically a Thomas C2 for short. Now we don't have the sweet swing out door action, it's all air system, which that's kind of sad. But. There's the captain's chair. We've got air up, down, telescope and wheel, pedals move in and out. All of our switches over here, we got cruise control. That's got a Caterpillar C7 diesel engine, Allison 2500 trans. Now look back there, look at all the windows. See, this roof is flatter. Yeah, it's flatter. So it's 78 here, I think, and then 76. Okay. Speakers running down the whole side. Yeah, because this 2A is not that wide where that comes into play. We got two emergency exits when we no doubt barrel roll. <laughs> is this not like a new bus? It's. This is nice. It's, you know, this is modern bus. The rust front here. Oh, that's the not bad. Didn't have that. no, it's well, not bad. it's just crappy powder coat on the seats. Yeah. We got. Is that a heating system right there? We got heat. We got heat. We got. When we bear roller down the roof, kind of we can escape out the hatch. <laughs> we got speakers so we can listen to our tunes. Play the jams. Assuming it's not just the PA system, but I think you know. I think the PA is gone. The. Yeah, we got wheel homes. That's yeah, they're tall. not. Yeah, well, they are kind of. They almost look taller to me. But that's, yeah, but that's... Yeah, we're gonna run E-Track down it. Yeah, so that's something we gotta do, you know. But this isn't that hard. It's letters, it's seating. It's a solid base to start with. And then, you know, we're gonna build all of our cargo racks and the beds out of wood. Yep. So that'll be a pretty quick process. Yep. You know, we just gotta make it sturdy enough. But with under-seat storage, that'll hold the tools and stuff. We just, we need the heavy stuff down low. You know, we don't want this too high up. You know, no. center of gravity too high up with the Jeeps in here. And the cool thing is that the seating capacity the amount of children this can hold 66. My bus is, my submarine isn't even half the student capacity. Yeah. So we're way underweight, which is nice. So we were looking like 2,700 in sub and then what? Tools. 2,400 on 2A. Yeah. So on the trip back, if we do have, we do pick up a 2A or something. We'll probably be full capacity. We'll be, we'll be hefty. But I mean. Not bad. Caterpillar C7 diesel, six cylinder. They say they're about 190 to 250 horse, okay. and the torque's either 580 to 900, depending what kit you know you get. It's almost six seven levels of Cummins. It's a seven two liter. Woo. Yeah. Well, that steering box. It's got nothing on the old wheelies. Puts mine to shame. Oh yeah. 
leaf springs, the holy grail of suspension. Oh, oh yeah. Got a booty shot down here. Woo! All right, so some of the requirements that we had to uh, do to title this to a RV rather than a school bus, um, we had to remove all the lettering um, that referenced it as a school bus and basically all over the vehicle. Uh, you do have to remove the stop sign, so um, it used to be there, you know, it's air powered to uh, flip out to tell traffic about it. Find a way to cover this hole, um, probably put new bolts in the holes that was holding the sign, and then uh, cap this uh, airline that operated the sign. Paint out the school bus up there. A uh, yellow crossbar that uh, swings out when uh, bus comes to a stop to let kids off. Uh, we also had to, we figured we had to remove that. So we uh, just popped the hood here uh, and it used to be mounted right here on the front bumper. So uh, we just took all that off um, and then we are, all the seats look like they're still in place but um, those will be uh, coming out 